Hello, everybody. This is going to be a quick video over how groups can influence our emotions. Now, groups can affect us a lot of, in a lot of ways, and they, they can affect our evaluations, they can affect our self-evaluations, they can affect our identity. Um, uh, groups can affect us in so many ways. They, they, we, we can form to groups. Um, so groups can in, influence us in many, many ways. They can also affect our emotional states in a very direct way way. And so that's what this video is going to be covering, the more direct ways in which groups can affect our uh, emotions. So I'm going to share my screen with you. ba -boom. Okay. So the first way that groups can influence our emotions is by amplifying them. So if you ever noticed how scary movies are more enjoyable in a theater or that action movies are more heart racing when you watch them with friends or that a movie talking about moving watching a movie with friends if you've ever noticed how watching a movie a funny movie with friends makes the movie funnier then you've experienced this effect of groups that groups can amplify emotions personal example um this is going to date this is going to show you show my age a little bit but a movie came out when i was in uh, i believe it was college called napoleon dynamite well the first time i watched that movie i watched it like i watch most movies which is by myself um i didn't much it was it was fine i didn't dislike it it was just eh, i didn't care much about it the first time i watched it again i watched it by myself the first time well the second time i watched it i watched it with a group of friends from college and that time that I watched the, the movie, it was hilarious. So hilarious, in fact, that I decided to go buy it. And so I went and bought the movie. And I didn't watch it right away, but I watched it, I watched it again a couple months or something like that later. And upon my third viewing of it, again, this t third time I was watching it by myself, yet again, I thought to myself, you know, this, this is all right, but it wasn't, why, why was it so funny to me? Well, part of the reason it was so funny to me and part of the reason you may have had similar experiences is because being in the context of a group can amplify the emotions we have when those emotions are directed at something that we're sharing attention to. What I mean by sharing attention to, when you and other members of your group are co-attending, you're all attending to the same thing at the same time, all right? When you're attending to the same thing at the same time, your emotional reactions to that thing that you're attending to can be amplified. And that's what Steinberg and colleagues have found across a series of studies. So what you see here is a uh, plot of the results from one of their studies. In this particular study, what they did is they had participants watch a uh, short video over homelessness. And they watch that video either uh, by themselves, and you can see this alone condition. Um, they had them either watch it before other people watched it, that's the pre-attention condition. After other people watched it, that's the post-attention attention condition. And with at the same time as other people, that's the group attention condition. They then, after having them watch, um, this video over homelessness asked them to rate how sad they felt and asked them how much of uh, their payment that they got for participating in the study they were willing to donate to help uh, homeless folks all right so this graph plots what they found and what they found was is that compared to when they watched it by themselves even with reference to a group. So here they watched it by themselves with no reference to a group at all, right? But in these two conditions, they know another, they know other people are watching the, the video, right? <clears throat> they just think that they're watching it before those others are or after. But in this condition, in the group attention condition, they think they're watching that video at the same time as others. And so when I say they think they are, it's because they're told that other people at other locations are watching the video. So they just think 
that they're co-watching uh, something, all right, in this particular study. And what they found was is that when they believe that they are co-watching or co-attending a video about homelessness, they feel more sad and are willing to donate more of their payment to help the homeless cause. So they, by watching this presumably sad video in the uh, context of others, they feel sadder. That the, the, the feelings of sadness are intensified. All right. So that's one way that groups can affect our emotions somewhat directly by intensifying them. All right. Another way that groups can affect our emotions are by spreading them. <laughs> All right. And I know that's uh, dangerous talk in a time uh, in which most of us are quarantined from COVID-19. Uh, but there is a phenomena known as emotion contagion. This is the process, this is the phenomena whereby we tend to begin feeling or at least expressing the feelings that we see others feeling or expressing. All right. Well, we can't see them feeling it, but we can see them expressing it. So we, we tend this. So emotion contagion is when we feel or express the emotions we see other people expressing. So if you've ever, you know, seen somebody, looked at somebody and they started smiling at you, all right, you probably felt this compulsion to smile back. Even if there's like zero reason to like the person, they start smiling at you. It compels you to smile, all right? Um, <clears throat> they give you a mean, uh, an angry look. It compels you to give an angry look. Um, emotion contagion um, is simply the spreading, like I said, of emotions. Now, there are several ways that we can spread emotions to one another, all right? There are some more advanced or more uh, higher order cognitive mechanisms that can lead us to sh uh, spread our emotions to others, or I guess it would better be better to say to catch other people's emotions. And there are some more uh, basic or automatic, or uh, I guess you could say, think of them as primitive cognitive mechanisms uh, that help that lead us to catch the emotions of others. We're going to first talk. We're going to start with those more advanced uh, mechanisms. So these are cognitive mechanisms that require a little bit of learning. And so <clears throat> one reason we might catch the emotions of others is upon seeing someone display an emotion, happiness, sadness, anger, what have you, that may lead us to recall instances in which we have experienced similar emotions. Once we recall, once those emotions, once those experiences come to mind, they may then evoke those similar emotions. So seeing a person who's angry might lead us to remember events that made us angry. Remembering those events that made us angry may then make us angry. And therefore seeing a person who's angry may lead us to catch their anger and feel, uh, feel anger ourselves. Over time, we may also be conditioned to adopt or catch the emotions of others. And so, you know, in the past, if we saw somebody angry, we may have been punished if we didn't get angry. So they might have come after us. If we saw somebody get angry and we got angry and we were then able to successfully stop them from punish, punishing us, then that's a negative reinforcer because we've removed the punish, we re removed a negative thing. And so over time, we can be conditioned to reflect an emotion. And, uh, you know, I gave an, uh, an example of a negative emotion, but it could also be with positive emotion, right? So, you know, if somebody smiles at us and we smile back, they may then interact with us. They may, <clears throat> you may get that good feeling of the smile, the happiness. And so that positively reinforces you. But if you didn't smile, right, uh, and then they quit looking at you or they don't interact with you, right, then that could be a negative punishment because then, you know, you're losing something that could have been pleasant. And so we can be conditioned to catch the emotions of others, to adopt the emotions we see in others. But there are even more basic mechanisms that can lead us to adopt 
those emotions of others in our group. Um, so for example, simply seeing certain emotions may un uh, uh, unconditionally trigger the same emotion, emotional response in us. So seeing someone smile may just make us happy. Seeing someone angry may just actually piss us off. Seeing someone sad may genuinely make us sad. And so in this situation, and when I say genuinely, if you've been conditioned to feel that way, you're also genuinely feeling that. But I suppose what I, I should specify by saying, seeing someone sad may genuinely make you sad, regardless of whether you've been conditioned to be sad at another person's sadness before. All right, so seeing another person sad may make you feel sorry for them, may make you empathize, and that may make you then feel sad. All right. Um, so uh, another person's emotional response, emotional expression may be an unconditioned stimulus, which provokes in you the unconditioned response of uh, presenting the exact same emotion. Okay, so that's one of the primitive mechanisms. Another primitive mechanism is something um, that uh, is called behavioral mimicry, okay? Behavioral mimicry occurs when somebody else behaves and we reflect that behavior. Um, so, you know, somebody yawns, we yawn. Somebody does that in their hair and we fiddle with their hair. Uh, somebody um, uh coughs, we cough, all right? This is behavioral mimicry. This is when we mimic the behaviors of others. Well, behavioral mimicry is largely automatic, so much so that if we ever suspect that another person's mimicking us and not, if we suspect that a person's mimicking us intentionally, then it can have negative consequences on, on, on our interactions with them. But if we never suspect that they're mimicking intentionally, and in fact, if we never suspect they're, if we never realize they're mimicking at all, but they are, mimicry can actually in, increase liking between people. So mimicry is an automatic uh, process whereby we reflect the behaviors of others. This automatic process can lead us to mimic the emotional expressions of others. So if somebody smiles at us, we mimic the, the smile. And I've listed here the facial feedback hypothesis simply because that mimicked face, so somebody smiles at us, we mimic the facial, we, we mimic the smile. We then often use the emotional expressions on our own face to infer our emotional state. And so if we behaviorally mimic a smile on another person, meaning we put a smile on our face, we may then automatically reference the smile on our face to figure out what emotion we feel. And so if we mimic another person who's smiling, suddenly we're smiling, and then because we're referencing our own smile as a cue as to how we feel, we may then dis decide or begin feeling happy, all right? Now I've also got behavioral, uh, uh, synchrony listed there. Um, this is when two people's behaviors sync up. All right. So this is when, you know, you know, you hear somebody talking and they're, you know, they're bobbing their head, you know, talking. And when you start bobbing your head too, and you begin to sync. So you begin to bob your heads at the same time. All right. That's synchrony. It's a similar mechanism to mimicry. Um, and so it also might lead to uh, emotion contagion. And that, my friends, is that. All right, guys, this video has been all about how we can, how groups can affect our emotions more directly. Emo uh, groups can affect our emotions in a whole host of ways indirectly by changing our evaluations of, of, of a whole host of things, by changing the way uh, the things that we uh, may be thinking about at, this, at a certain period of time. But they can also affect our emotions directly in the ways that we've talked about in this video. All right, guys, and that is that. So, um, as I mentioned, um, well, actually, I don't remember what I was going to say. So, that is that. As always, if you have any questions, let me know. If not, I hope you have a great week, and I'll see you later on.